let's talk about D&D mechanics, and today we're going to talk about the rapier. So, here are the stats on the rapier. Uh, the weight is correct, it's about two pounds, give or take. Um, it is a, it says it's a finesse weapon, and I would mostly agree with that. And it says it is piercing damage, which I half agree with, because it is both piercing and slashing damage the rapier is a cut and thrust weapon. Now, depending on the style of rapier you're doing, most of them are probably going to emphasize the thrust over the cut, and the rapier itself changed over time to more favor the thrust over the cut. But you can cut with it, and especially with earlier rapiers, they had a good amount of power behind them. Not as much as something like a longsword, because the longsword has that leverage behind it, but this is still going to be pretty effective in the cut. Um, you also can do bludgeoning damage with this. But basically, you just punch someone or pummel them, which you can really do with any sword. Now, this would be pretty formidable to get hit with, but I don't think it should take any bonuses for that. Like, it is available to you if you're close enough to do that, but it's not something like the long sword where it's a, a built-in mechanic. Um, so, the thing about the rapier that makes it so special is the fact that it is really, really, really good at hand protection. The longsword does not have good hand protection. This does. I can be fighting and basically not worry about hand hits. It's very unlikely that someone's going to be able to hit me in the hand. They might be able to stab me. It's still pretty difficult. But a cut to the hand, because of this hand protection, means I really don't have to worry about my hand, and I do on the longsword. So, if anything, we could implement an automatic bonus to armor class from the rapier because of this. I think that'd be kind of cool. Um, it might make it a little bit overpowered, so maybe you have to balance other things, but that is one of the biggest party pieces of the rapier, is the fact that it doesn't hit your hands. Another huge advantage of the rapier is that it is a one-handed weapon, where the long sword is a two-handed weapon. So with this, we can apply a second implement. In this case, I have a dagger. With this, the main advantage of fighting with two weapons like this is that I can both parry and attack in one tempo. That means I can block and go without having to block and then go. It's a huge advantage and it totally changes the way you would fight with a weapon like this. Even if it isn't a dagger and it's a buckler, I still have the option to guard and attack at the same time. So. And I can use these weapons both defensively and offensively. If I wanted to, I could come in with this buckler and I could really be aggressive and move the weapon out of the way or even punch the person. The same thing with the dagger, I can just fence with it forward and I can come in and make openings and get up in somebody's face, or I could try and stab someone with the dagger, though that's less common because this is so long, you'd probably want to use that. Let's get into some more nuanced stuff with some rules. So. We have styles that allow us to do both of these weapons. From the beginning in the base game of 5e, you have access to, no matter what class you are, two-weapon fighting, which allows you to attack with one weapon with your bonuses and proficiencies, and then also attack with your second weapon, although it won't get any bonuses or proficiencies. If you are a ranger or a fighter, then you have access to two-weapon fighting style which allows you to attack with all your bonuses and proficiencies, and then make your bonus action also with those bonuses and proficiencies. So these are cool and useful. They, they absolutely are something you could do, but I would argue the biggest thing that this gives you is a bonus to defense, because like I said before, you can defend and attack at the same time. So I would argue that having a second weapon is something that would give you a bonus to your armor class. And that moves us over to dual wielding, which is a feat you can take. Now, dual wielding is specifically targeted at not light weapons. It allows you to dual wield two weapons that are not light. So something like two long swords. I could dual wield two long swords with that feat. Now, this isn't realistic at all. You wouldn't want to dual wield two two-handed weapons. It takes away all the advantages you get from a weapon like this, which is leverage. But it's fantasy, whatever, that's cool. But the thing you get from this is a bonus to your armor class, which makes much more sense for the rapier and dagger. This is what really needs a bonus to the armor class, because I now have better defense. This or a buckler. So, I think there's a little bit of a mismatch here. I think that we should kind of shuffle these around if we want to do it more realistic, but it is fantasy, and I know it's got to work within the rules of the game. So DMs, tell me what you think. Should we give a bonus to the rapier for armor class because of its excellent hand protection, or is that game-breaking? Would it make it too powerful? 
I don't want it to be better than the longsword by default because I think they're both interesting and good weapons. Should we give a bonus to armor class when you are two weapon fighting because this is primarily going to be a defensive weapon instead of an offensive weapon? Should we get rid of the secondary attack on this and instead give it an armor class bonus? What about two weapon fighting style? Yeah, that one you get uh, to use all your bonuses and proficiencies in the second attack. And then we have dual wielding, which allows you to dual wield two larger weapons. And you get a bonus, uh, you get a bonus to your armor class on that one, where it, it, it doesn't really make sense. So give me your thoughts, I'd love to hear them in the comments. Thank you for watching. If you enjoy this or any of our other content, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Your support allows us to keep creating shorts, fencing videos, and our major projects. When you support the team on Patreon, you get access to behind the scenes content, discounts on merch, opportunities to game the crew, and so much more. Don't forget to like and subscribe to stay up to date with all the fun stuff Cellsword Arts is doing. You can even ring the bell if you really feel like it. You can also join the community discord and chat with the crew and other cool people with similar interests. And if you don't agree with something that I've said in one of these videos, you can always fill out the duel request form and challenge me to a duel so you can prove your point. You can find our Patreon and Discord link in the description. Additional links are in our bio. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you on the next video.